dearest father, the distress of your last letters is all too clear to me, and I fully understand your need for greater clarity on the situation here in the colonies. Your years managing our London office have detached you from events in the land of our birth. Thus, I have taken your advice and devoted much of this past 12 months in traveling throughout the colonies, gathering information. I'm delighted that you have booked passage to Boston and eagerly await the 31st of December, when we shall again be together. I remain your affectionate son, James Edward. Father, you're home. <laughs> James. Oh, it's good to see you, son. See to the baggage and here. A shilling for your trouble. Thank you, sir, and blessings on you in the new year. Blessings on all of us. And may it be the last of these confounded troubles. Well, still drawing, James. And improving. Just a map, Father, to show you the military situation at present. Yes, exactly as I've heard in London. The heavy British garrisons in New York and New Jersey are poised to reassert the Crown's authority. Within months, we'll see this rebellion dealt with. Not months, Father, if at all. Well, if that be true, these troubles could last too long. Better to abide by my original inclination. You don't mean to close the American office? Yes. Rely on our trade with the Canadians, with India. Until the rebels are dealt with. And our fellow countrymen regain their sanity. Are you ready to turn your back on this country? Until the people support the king, James. Accept authority. The risk is too great. Well, I'm not sure. I travel the length of the colonies, and one thing I know, the people and the land will decide this conflict, and the people, their choices are open. James, we are merchants. Oh, no concern. reason to buy time until the outcome can be better predicted, the choices of the people better known. All the evidence that I've... Is this your evidence? A mass of drawings. Is this proof that I should continue to trade with the people who cannot decide what they want? Something you've not seen in the London papers. A portrait of the people and the land. of your portraits, boy. I can predict the outcome for you. When faced with a real red coat, the people will choose the king soon enough. Some will, yet others. It takes a special breed to settle a land like this, Father. I met a farm girl in Connecticut. Nothing out of the ordinary, I suppose. Sarah Terrence, by name. Oh, it was like you stopped me. George is, ma'am. Oh, you are a man. Peach fuzz. Mary a whisker. Ah, it's a she, all right. If you're done with me. I'm never done with a pretty lady. All right, does he, Christopher? Get back to the fire. Is a corporal sure she's not the spy we're looking for? Sorry, miss. George you know. Could you open your sack now? Just for the form of it, like. If you were a gentleman, you'd offer me some of your dinner before you searched me. The sack, miss. Please, if you don't mind. I'll answer only to an officer. That's for the best, I'm sure. But I've got to see I'll inside... I'll go with you peaceably, but I'll not submit to a search. Not with a man like him nearby. Oh. You hang on here, mate. I don't think I'm going anywhere. Yeah, take my share of the bird. I'll get her to billet. This way, miss. Oh. 
You're a nice girl, lass. But when Captain Andrews is done inspecting the line, well, miss, if you are carrying a dispatch from Mr. Washington, you'd better destroy it. You know, Tony. Then why give me a second chance? It's not my war, miss. Well, Captain Andrews don't think like me. If he finds papers on you, miss, he'll throw you in the nearest prison as soon as look at you. And if you try to escape now, well, he'd hang you, miss. Think hard on it. Mr. Washington won't see those papers now anyway. So taking on the whole British army. Well, you're not more than me by years, miss. That's a little young for prison. Andrews? Good afternoon, sir. As you were. Afternoon, Captain. Good afternoon. Nurse? Sarah delivered the papers to Washington personally, and he was right happy to have them. My God, sir, it's a strange race of women we're breeding. Can't say I approve. Such affairs as these are men's business. Women will be in trade next, and the slaves will seek to be freedmen overnight. Which is just what Lord Dunmore has proposed to the slaves of Virginia. The British governor has offered freedom to the slaves. Precisely. Freedom to any slave who will fight for the king. Is that what the empire is coming to? And what say the slaves? It's difficult to tell. In Virginia, on a great plantation, I met a certain Eric Terror. Now, this piece of paper I brought, it's important. I want to tell you about it. What's it mean, Tarver? Being true, what's it mean? It means that if you leave the master, then Lord Dunmore... Who's he? Well, he worked for the king, who the master of us all. But our master, he don't want no more to do with the king. So Lord Dunmore, he said to you, I can make you free. If you fight for the king again, your master, I'm going to put you in the king's army. I'm going to manumit you. I ain't never heard about no manumitting around here. Well, Lord Dunmore, he figured that if enough of us are going to be his soldiers, he's going to have himself a mighty army. And things going to be just like always. Seppin, you going to be free. How do you know? Maybe did you send some stuff out to the fields? I must have said, yes, sir, to the king. Maybe this is all back. How do you know? I don't. You are a house servant, Tara. If you like the field hands all so much, we'll put you here for good. Otherwise, get back to the manor house. Now. I should have you whipped, boy. But please, 
pleases you, Master. Damn it, man! It's not a question of what pleases me! It's a matter of how they found out about Dunmore's meddling. And what they'll do, they learned of it as you did. We also have ears, Master. And as to what they might do, I have no way of knowing. Have I ever mistreated you? Didn't I see to it that you learned how to read and write? Have I ever given you cause to even think of becoming a runaway? No, Master. Nor had I ever considered it. Until I heard of the great declaration at Philadelphia. A Virginia gentleman. He spoke of all men having rights. And whatever else, Master, I do consider myself a man. The meaning is clear. Harriet, Dunmore doesn't give a whiff if he bankrupts the whole of Virginia. He knows right and well we need you. The country can only expand this way. This is no Europe of cities. It's a continent. Lord Dunmore, indeed. He'd do anything to keep us in line. You, too, could offer freedom. If you choose, a promise I can't keep. No more than you can trust Dunmore, should he destroy our cause. He'll have you all back in chains. Perhaps. But the smallest taste of freedom for my people. I can't chain you up, Tara. Nor is it in me to have you whipped. But nor will you offer me freedom. The English will. You will be free one day, Tara. It needs patience. And what will you do then? Can I trust you to stay here? Again, with respect, Master. It is I who must decide whom I can trust. Do you trust me? Or will you trust the British? Curious, Master. In my entire life, the first opportunity to make a decision about myself, by myself, Let be all, Master. Trust us, Eric. We mean this to be a free nation. One day. Truly free. become of us. It's far too early, Father. The outcome is still in the balance. Will be for months. The people have not yet decided. But did you meet no one loyal to the mother country? Surely, Father. There are many Tories. Even families are divided by this crisis. I remember the Jamesons of Charleston. I've done it, my love. Found a purchaser for the shop. What with a war looming and a naval blockade almost certain, I thought I'd be a rice exporter forever. Still, if Jacobson wants the business, the more fool he. And at the full price, too. Well, I'd hope for a little more joy. You know what this means. That we're bound for somewhere else. <laughs> Not just somewhere else, to London. He read my father's letter. My exile's over. With the success of the business, well... I'm the black sheep no more. You'll have me back. We can be done with exporting rice. We're free to go home, Joe. Away from all this confounded trouble. Back to London. Civilization. Home. Peter, this is our home. I'm an Englishman, not a colonist. I thought you were to be serious. I'm very serious. 
after a couple journeys. We've proven my worth here. Just as the world is turning upside down, we can leave for London on the next packet boat. With my friends, neighbors. No betrayal, Joe. You go with me, your husband, to our homeland. I think not. You've taken up with these rebels. No such thing. I have no mind for politics. But I'll not return to England. What? Madam. A lady such as yourself always That's obeys the... Precisely the point. You're already behaving like a London gentleman. Assuming that his wife will obey as though she were chattel. And be treated as a lady should. I'll say one thing for the colonies. I'm of use here. I'm needed. I can work by your side. As things are, they'll remain, but with people who understand us. No, Peter. I've lost my taste for the role of a refined English lady. Talk like a rebel. And you, a Tory. Politics had nothing to do with my choice. I do what's reasonable. Oh, what serves you best. I'll not be moved around like a piece of inventory. <laughs> I'd hardly leave you to fend for yourself. I have friends. Not one of them worth two farthings to rub together to call a hate me. And that's another thing. Being poor is no crime here. People can work for the future together. Would you forsake all that England is and will be? The greatest nation on earth. For, for a city with streets of mind. Is that all you see, Peter? English. Well, husband, I am English no longer. I am an American. I'll hear no more of it. So help me, I will leave you behind. As much as it would grieve me, I'll not stay here. And so be it. He did, in fact, leave, and she stayed in Charleston. <laughs> Foolish woman. Probably a camp follower to Washington's army by now. On the contrary, Father. She runs her business and remains uncommitted. For the meantime, many people prefer neutrality. And did you find no one who preferred loyalty? I met a Tory, Charles Chamberlain, a vast landholder north of New York, a wealthy man, and much given to entertaining officers of the local British garrison. <laughs> Colonel, your wit is razor sharp tonight. It can only be Mike Barrett. Mm -hmm. Burke, the Colonel's glass. Oh, thank you. It's fine, is it not? None better between there and London. Now off with you, and quickly. Uh, here's a quiet one. My indentured servant. Hmm. Irish and Catholic. Wouldn't have anything to say, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this, Chamberlain. You have turned this wilderness into a place that has made us all feel to home. Well, as different as it is, it's still part of Britain, after all. Mm, yes, unfortunately, some of your neighbors are not of a similar mind. Tempest in a teapot, Colonel. A mob of illiterate ruffians. So here's to you and your men. Without you, the rebels committee would be all over the place. Probably expropriate my land, uh, gentlemen. What is it, Colonel? Can I not toast your health? Oh, of course. Uh, but I'm afraid, gentlemen, uh, my accepting it would be in rather poor taste. Gentlemen, we really must go. Chamberlain, I, I, I have bad news for you. Uh, you see, my entire command is preparing to withdraw. You don't mean it. Oh, because I do, Fred. You see, the, the rebel army could be upon us at any moment. And the orders came this morning. Because of a shabby mob of riffraff? <laughs> and a mob they may be, but they act like an army. And we must give them the respect due to an enemy at war. But me? What of me? Oh, oh, I have permission to take you with us, sir. Uh, 
under our safety, and then later you can go to London. But my land, my house. We'll give it a thought, friend. Wealth is a small sacrifice to make for loyalty to the crown and all it stands for. Eh? A bit of claret would help. By... By all means, sir. Burke! The claret. Oh, Sergeant Burke of the Westchester Militia has other duties. Carry on, Sergeant. Your visit is an unexpected pleasure. Mm. To freedom. Well, by all means. Freedom. Then you are one of us. I... I value my freedom. <laughs> and no doubt your land. <laughs> we have little time to waste, sir. Your property forms a natural line of defense against the regrouping British. If you're with us, well and good. If not, then I appropriate your deeds in the name of the Continental Congress of the United States. I'm a patriot, naturally. You have my word on it. Your word isn't good enough, Chamberlain. If you're with us, you'll have to prove it. Get on with it. I am. Of course I am. Just don't thrash me. Please. I'm tired is all. Sure, I'm not about to hit anyone. That's why I came to this land. Because I heard it was a place where there wouldn't be hidden people simply because they're less important or speak to God differently. A man's a man, no matter his birth or religion. Bless you for that, Beck. <laughs> better be saving your blessing for Washington, said he needs some better than me, he does. No doubt, Burke. No doubt. I'll uh, get back to work. Sergeant. When last I heard, Charles Chamberlain was with the Patriot cause, heart and soul. A rebellion built by rabble and threatened confiscation. It's hardly something to be proud of, is it? Might as well close the business and have it seized. Perhaps. Think of the King's army, boy, the mightiest ever. Now what can mere farmers hope to do against such power? Perhaps you're right, Father. Yet many American soldiers in Pennsylvania have tasted the might of George III's army. I spoke with a man from a village on the frontier called York. A veteran. He'd tasted retreat. Yeah, the cook's asking after you. Says to me, he says, where's that Dutchman for horse? Don't my cooking taste good enough to him no more? No more. Never did. Moldy meat and hardtack ain't fit for the cows in the farm. I know what I do. How's the missus? Ailing. But strong. Can't hardly pioneer the farm and look after the kids alone. Hey, you done your share. Your enlistment's up. No one gonna fault you for leaving us. Hell, with no proper boots and tents full of lice and food turning green with mold. You with a wife and young'un. 
If you throw it all up, no one's going to say you nay. You need it on the frontier anyway. Where are you going? For a walk through the country. A touch of home would be nice. That's for sure. It takes a lot of believing to follow Washington. The way things are and all. Nah, it ain't him so much, is it? It's the whole idea. Suppose every one of us what's done his time ups and leaves him. Where are we all gonna be then? Saluting the English, I guess. Well, that's it, ain't it then? I mean, it's up to us what happens here. It's the privates what wins the wars, not the generals. It's the likes of me what are gonna make it work a lot. What's up? Nothing. Just give me back my bag. Well, I figured I'd grab it. What with you leaving and all? Who said anything about leaving? Come on. Hmm. Let's go find Cook. See what poison he's worked up for supper. So there they are, Father. The stops along the route of my journey. The choices of ordinary people. Choices that may well create a new nation. For the new year. 1777 and the years beyond. Hmm. Think of a world where British and American are different peoples. James, am I right in going back to London? That's not for me to say, Father. I have no answers other than my own. It is as I feared. You are a rebel, aren't you? I am an American. You know how much your choice distresses me, son. I, I suppose it will be good for our trade. Perhaps in time. But for now, there's something else I must do. General Washington has called for more men. I see. Well, if this is something you must do, then Godspeed, my son. And you, Father. Thank you.